Ladies and gentlemen, I'll try to bring back the series of how to heal some of the hardest bosses in M plus this season with different classes and we're starting with Yaunu and the Restoration Shaman. The very first tip that I can give you for every class is don't run in first, let the tank go in so he has enough time to go to the boss and position him correctly because as you can see here that didn't happen and usually that stomp which is not directed to the outside of the arena could kill people. This time we were lucky enough, so now the fight starts as normal. The first thing that I'm going to tell you is when the colossal blows happen, don't sweat healing them over unless there's a nut up. As you can see it didn't hit that hard, although this is just a plus 24 fortified, it's not a tyrannical key, but it dropped us to about 50% health, although the rock also had a defensive up, so even if you're running high tyrannical keys it's not going to one shot people. Now you do have to top people off eventually, but you're not in a hurry because there's no incoming damage after the stomp hits again if there's no add up. When it comes to the add though, this is where you have to heal and I would recommend to get as a shaman the weak aura that tells you when to drop cloud burst before important boss mechanics. For this specific boss it gives you a notice to drop it so it bursts just after the colossal blow that lands after the add spawns, which is very important as you're going to see. The weak aura also has an audio announcement and you can get it from the description of this video or watch the corresponding video that I have made for it if you want to know more about it. At this specific point of the fight the add is just about to spawn and there's 14 seconds until the colossal blow that follows. It also has a 2 second cast time, so if I drop the cloud burst now, it's going to pop just after the colossal blow ends. So I'm dropping my cloud burst and now I'm preparing for the ad that spawns. As soon as the ad spawns, you wanna focus it and burst it down as quickly as possible. It's going to do constant AoE damage, which is going to overlap with the colossal blow, so this is what you need to survive in order to go through this boss fight. Over here I'm popping my first CD which is Ancestral Guidance and I advise you to do the same because it's only a 2 minute cooldown which is shorter compared to the rest of your toolkit. In this case I'm going to combine it with Stormkeeper and push some damage into the Atwile at the same time I'm healing my group to full. But the important concept here is you wanna have everybody at full health before the Colossal Blow lands. That's why we pop the CDs at this point, in this case I managed to do so, but if you're lacking behind you can pop your cloud burst before that so you have everybody at full health. Here I'm also going to pop my defensive ancestral shift, which you can have for every other add, and you can communicate with your team when you want them to pop their defensives as well, when you know that you don't have cooldowns for. As you can see the blow lands here and the druid drops very low because he doesn't have a defensive, which is why it was very important to top everybody up before the colossal blow. You will have both your primordial wave and your tidebringer charges for every single add, so use them aggressively and over here as you're going to see the cloud burst has over a million healing store inside, it's going to pop and it's going to top everybody up, which is also very important because when the add is alive everybody is constantly taking ticking damage. So that's pretty much the whole fight apart from the cooldowns and over here as you can see the ad is almost dead and I'm in no hurry to top people off, I'm just running over the flowers because they're not going to be taking damage until the next colossal blow. And all of that of course keeps repeating until you kill the boss or the boss kills you. So now let's talk about your cooldown rotation for every ad and how do you survive all of them throughout the fight. As I mentioned earlier you're going to have Cloud Burst, Primordial Wave and Tidebringer Charges for every single ad phase and you're going to have your defensive for every other phase. So you want to save your big cooldowns for the phases where you're not going to have your defensive. Now on this particular case I know it's fortified key so I just dropped my healing tide totem but if it was tyrannical I would either use my ascendance or spirit link totem. If you're planning to let's say use your SLT, you should let everybody know in advance to stack up for that specific colossal blow during the ad phase. Or even better, make a macro so they know to come in when you're preparing to drop it. And then the other important part is, I would save the healing tide totem for the phases where you do have your defensive up, as healing tide is not as powerful as the other two cooldowns and it will mitigate some of the ticking damage from the ad, but that's about it. So to put things into perspective, here is a list of cooldown that you can use for every single ad. 
I'd like to start with Ancestral Guidance and a Defensive, followed by a Spirit Link, and then for the next phase you have your Defensive back, so I'm combining that with the Healing Tight Totem. Here for the next phase your AG is going to be back up, but your Defensive is not, so I'm just going to pop my Ascendance and heal through it this way. Next one is going to be Ancestral Guidance plus a Defensive, and for the next one your Spirit Link Totem is going to be back up. In short, you rotate between your AG and Healing Tide Totem for the defensive phases and then you rotate between your SOT and your Ascendance for the phases where you don't have your defensive up. Keep in mind that you can also call for people to use their personals or if you have group wide defensive like Zephyr or something like that, you can also call for these and I would recommend that to happen primarily over the Healing Tide phases which are probably your weakest ones. The last tip that I'll give you is keep your Earth Shield on yourself at all times because this is 6% damage mitigation and if you have a squishy target in your party you can put the other Earth Shield on them as your tank is probably going to be fine most of the time. Don't forget to use your Cloud Burst, P-Wave and Tidebringer charges quite aggressively and you can find the weak cores that I mentioned earlier in the description of this video. Let me know what you think about this guide, if you have any questions or what other bosses you would like to see similar guides for. And do you want them to have a different healer perspective with a different class and spec? Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, until then, bye bye, happy healing and take care.